Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna be installing macOS Ventura inside VMware Workstation Pro on a Windows 11 PC. Before we begin, let's take a look at the minimum requirements to get this installed. For RAM, we're gonna to wanna to have at least eight gigs of RAM, and for hard disk space, we're gonna to wanna to go around 80 gigs or greater. You're gonna to wanna to provide at least four CPU cores on your PC, macOS Ventura ISO image file. I'll make sure I link that in the description below, as well as the VMware Workstation Pro. And if you don't have that installed, you can check out this video and I'll walk you through the steps. All the steps and tools used in this video will be linked in the description below. If you find this video useful, please consider subscribing to the channel. I'm trying to grow my channel as big as possible to reach as many users as I can. With all that out of the way, let's take a look at getting this installed. When you try to install macOS on VMware Workstation Pro, you'll notice that you don't have it as a default option. All right, so for this to work successfully, what we wanna do is use the Pilio Projects Unlocker. And what I'll do is I'll link this in the description below. We're gonna be using the Unlocker version 3.04, and we'll allow that to download. Here is the download file. Click on that and it'll download onto your system. Okay, so I have the folder extracted and here it is on my desktop right now. And inside, we're going to be running two things. We're going to be running the installation command file over here, and we're also going to be doing the win update tools command. So the first one, we're just going to right click on it and select run as administrator. Make sure you're running this as administrator. Uh, you'll get the option here to click on more info and then run anyway. Okay, so it's running right now. There we go. And uh, so once you run that, it should be good to go. We now are gonna update the tools and I'll right click and I'm gonna run this as, as administrator as well. So say yes to the prompt and it'll start to update all the tools. This takes a few minutes and it's done. So it disappears, it closes out when it's completely done. Now we can go ahead and open up our VMware Workstation Pro. So I'm gonna close out of this window. I'm gonna open up my VMware Workstation Pro now. There we go. And now we're ready to create a new virtual machine. So I'm gonna click on the create new virtual machine button right over here. And I'm gonna be selecting typical, click on next. And we're gonna be selecting this option, install operating system later, click on next. And now you'll notice that you get the option for Mac OS X, which was not there before. Uh, after running the unlocker tool, it now appears. So we're good to go. We're installing Mac OS 13, so I'm gonna select that. I don't really know if that matters so much, uh, but I'll be leaving that selected. And then we can go ahead and click on next. And now the virtual machine name and location, you can call this whatever you want. I'll leave mine as Mac OS 13. Uh, the location, if you're running into space issues, you can browse here and select a different folder or a different drive that you wanna save it in. After you have that selected, click on next. And in here, you need the disk size. So 80 gigs is an excellent size. Anything above that's gonna be safe. Uh, you can leave that the way it is. And what we wanna do is select this option over here, which is store as a single file, and then go ahead and click on next. At this window, what we wanna do is click on the customized hardware. You can see the default settings here, but we're gonna make a few changes. So we're gonna select that, and inside memory, um, you're gonna to wanna to have at least eight gigs of RAM. If you can do more than eight gigs of RAM, go ahead and do that. You can see I can have up to 16, which would be the maximum that's allocated for this drive. I'm actually just gonna beef it up just a little bit over 10 gigs. And then for processors, we wanna select at least four processors in here. Uh, which should be good. It'll help run it smoother. If you can afford to use more, go ahead and do that. And now what we want to do is select the new CD DVD. Now we're going to be pointing to the ISO image file. So we're going to be selecting the use ISO image file right over here. And then we're going to click on browse. And what you want to do is have this downloaded. And I already have this downloaded on my computer. If you don't already have the ISO image file, I'll make sure I link that in the description below to my blog as well as to my Patreon. Depending on how you're getting it, uh, you might run into bandwidth issues or limitations, so that's why I've also included it on my Patreon. So I'm gonna click on Browse. So here is my Mac OS ISO image file. I'm gonna go ahead and select that and then click on Open. And we've modified all the settings that we need to do here. We can go ahead and click on Close, and then we can click on Finish. Now what we wanna do is we have to edit the VMX file. So we're gonna right click on the Mac OS 13 that we just created, and then we're gonna go to Open VM Directory. And inside here, we have all the files that are associated with our virtual machine. The VMX file is the one that we're gonna edit. So we're gonna right click on this and we're gonna say open with notepad. And now we have the VMX file opened over here. What we wanna do is scroll all the way down to the very bottom, create a new line by hitting enter. And then we're gonna paste this line in, which is smc.version equals quote zero quote. Once you have that added into here, one more thing that we wanna do is search for a line in here. We're gonna go up here to edit and then find. Okay, so we're gonna be searching for the ethernet and here it is, it's down here at the bottom. We're gonna be changing this. So we're actually gonna be removing the E1000E and we're gonna be replacing it with VMX net three, uh, no spaces and then the end quote. So now that we have that change, we're just gonna save it, file and save. And now what we can do 
is go ahead and close this file. So we'll exit out of here and it can close out of this. And now we're ready to start up our virtual machine. So you want to make sure it's selected over here on the left hand side. And then we're going to click on power on this virtual machine and it's going to boot up for us. This process might take a few minutes for it to get started. What I'll do is I'll jump over to the next step. Okay, so once you get the language option over here, you're going to select whichever one you're comfortable with. I'm going to be using English, and then I'm going to be clicking on the next arrow. And at the next screen, what we're going to be doing is using the disk utility. So I'm going to go ahead and select that, click on continue, and I'm going to be selecting the VMware SATA hard drive. So this is the virtual drive that we're using right now. We have it selected, and we're going to select erase, and then you can just give it a name. And for the format type, you can select the format type that you want. I'm going to be selecting Mac OS Extended Journal and click on erase. This only takes a second for it to race. Once it's complete, you can click on done. And now we're ready to install the operating system. So we're going to close out of this window. And now we're going to select the install Mac OS 13 beta and then click on continue. Click on continue. And for the software license agreement, we're going to select agree. We're going to select our virtual drive and then click on continue. This installation will take a few minutes to take place. What I'll do is I'll jump over to the next step. So we're on to the last step, and that's to configure the operating system. Uh, the first option is to select your region. I'm just going to be selecting the United States in this list. So we're selecting the United States and then click on Continue. We're going to be leaving the default options over here and clicking on Continue. For accessibility, we're not going to touch anything, so we'll select Not Now. So we'll be connecting by using the local network Ethernet, and I'll be selecting Continue. Uh, I'll be leaving all the internet options as default. It's just going to be using my network card and my PC. And for data and privacy, we'll leave that as default. Migration assistant, we're not going to be using anything here. So we can just select not now. And we'll be getting the terms and conditions. You can just select I agree and then agree again. Now for the name, you can just give in any name that you want here. So I'm just going to go ahead and type in Geekware and then a password. And once you have your password typed in, you can go ahead and click on continue. I'm not going to be enabling any location services. So I'll just click on continue. So now you can select the time zone that you're in. I'm just going to leave it as default for this example and then click on continue. And we won't be doing anything here, so I'll click on continue. And for screen time, we'll be setting this up later. For the look of how you want to interface with your operating system, you can select whatever you'd like. Again, I'm just gonna be leaving it as default settings. Okay, and the last step is the feedback assistant. You can see that we've just completed this. So you can either just continue this or close out of it. I'm not interested in going through that. So I'm gonna close out of this. So that's how you do it. That's how we install macOS Ventura on a Windows 11 PC using VMware Workstation Pro. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you found it useful, please smash that like button. If you have any questions, you can go ahead and put it in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer them. I'm not an expert. I try my best to answer the questions as best as I can. I'll be linking everything in the description below, as well as links to my blog, to my Patreon, and to as many sources as I can to help you get the ISO image file if that's what you're looking for. Thank you for your support. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you're looking for more videos like this, and I'll catch you on the next one.